and welcome back to Art Toronto, the 2010 edition. We're at Art 45's booth, and we're once again here with Chloe. Chloe, the uh, numbers artist who was here last year, is not is not in the booth this time around, but there's more of a painterly presence. Yes. I'm noticing. Yes. Uh, with Ron Martin, who's yeah. a favorite of my mom's. Really? Yeah, he had her over for coffee once. She was really? thrilled. Apparently, uh, he's quite the character. He is quite the character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can tell by his paintings. And this is, seems like a rather thin one. I know some of them are really, really built Very, up. Yeah, yeah. No, this one has um, not that much paint. It's actually quite nice and refreshing, I think. Um, a few white spots. For Ron Martin, it is very, yeah, yeah. refreshing. Though he usually does have white spots, though, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah sometimes he is also. Hey. Are you oh, doing it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, um, uh, and usually, I mean, my mom was like thrilled like that his paintings were, I think she thought they were the first ones to have painting loop out and come back into the surface. Really? I, uh, I don't know. Actually. Well, that's, that's what her yeah. said was about, but nothing about Ron. Yes. Um, this is Angela Graholtz, who had a retrospective at the National Gallery uh, recently that just ended. And this is um, a zebra chrome from 1988 called Interior. And there's uh, another one outside of the booth called uh, The Window. Great. And so that's Landon McKenzie over here. Landon McKenzie, who makes very, very big paintings. We need a lot of space for them. This one is called Night Sky and Blue Moon. And I the moon is here. It's hard to find it. It's here. Um, yeah, huge painting, uh, which is quite nice. A lot of people like it. From far away, you fall in love with it, I think. Um, I, I know it's, it's playing havoc with my preview. Um, monitor on, on the camera here so we'll see how it comes through. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. I think there's a lot of detail. Yeah, she's there's really interested in mapping. And I think this is a map of the sky um, or a map of the world. She actually said she her son's in Africa and she walked into the booth and said, oh look, my son's here in Zimbabwe and you just kind of showed this dot. So I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. Uh, and that's Itian Zach again who was at the Contemporary Art Museum recently had a solo show which is where we started. This um, is Oscar Azzi, who um, we do not represent, but we were very happy to have in our booth. It works very well, I think, with it in next to it. Yeah. Yeah, it does, and uh, so I definitely recommend everyone should come to the Art45 booth uh, this weekend. But what really interested me was the catalog from a show you had, uh, yeah. which you curated. Yes. And this is a, a really interesting uh, concept for our times. Yeah. Um, this is a dialogue, well, it's, it's a a two, juxtaposition. juxtaposition of yes. interview between yeah. John and, and Gabor. Yes. Uh, and John is... John Rathman's 28 and works mostly with the net. So um, his work is really net-based, mostly with Google Street View these days. And Gabor Selassie, so he's 28. And uh, Gabor Selassie is 82 and has been working in Quebec. He started in Hungary. He actually immigrated in 56 to Canada and has been taking pictures of Quebec mostly, but also um, of Italy and here is Hungary. Those are the only pictures. All the rest is from Montreal and um, a lot also in Val d'Or up north in Quebec. And what I was interested in doing with the show was actually try and put John Raffman's work, which is very net art based and so it touches um, topics that are kind of uh, surveillance, um, modern identity. Um, he's also really interested in alienation, the idea of yeah, surveillance. Kind of, it's quite pessimist in a way, um, and scary because I mean Google Street View does uh, take pictures of the world constantly. Uh, Gabor Selassie, on the other hand, is not at all seen like that. He's um, a photographer. It's art. I mean, he's had many retrospectives. He's really established, and he's generally um, described as someone who's an artist, but also a documentary photographer. And what I was interested in doing is actually relating the topics that John Rathman's associated with of surveillance of um, yeah, uh, what I just said, um, with Gabor Selassie and putting him in a tradition, but then also relating Gabor's work to those ideas. Um, yeah, almost when I was first looking at this, I thought it might have been like a, a straight up, this is where Gabor's shot was, so I'm going to take the exact no, same shot from Google Earth, no. but it's, it's just close enough. Yeah, like, you've it's actually, here. it was a lot of um, work. They both have, I mean, uh, there's so many images from, Gab uh, from Gabor, I mean, his career span is like 50 years so he has so many images but then uh, John Rothman has selected also a, a huge amount of images from Google Street View so I really tried my best to either juxtapose images that were aesthetically similar or had uh, similar themes so for example I associated this images which is nuns from 87 in Italy and look at the look she's given right there yeah, I know yeah. yeah he actually talks about that image in yeah. the interview um, with um, uh, women wearing hijab in uh, the UK so I was trying to link it ideas of yeah 
you know, we're very, very scared, I think, of, or not scared, it's completely the wrong term, but we're really focusing on laws about uh, these people who are religious, and I think that a few years ago, a lot of women were kind of wearing exactly the same thing, so I was trying to put that in perspective. What do you, I mean, I got a sense of it, I guess, through the, through the text of your catalog, but what do you really think about the copyright issue? The public space, documentation of the public space. Uh, what is the artist's responsibility? Yeah. Because um, I know there's a different interpretation in Quebec since the quote in there by... Yeah, by yeah Robert Duclos, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his movie. Um, in Quebec and in France, you can't take any pictures of anyone without their permission, basically, or publish it. You can take an image, but you can't ever publish it. Even if it's purely for artistic for, yeah, purposes. Pure, yeah, so... Um, but Gabor talks about it a lot because he's obviously taking images of people who have no idea about it um, on St. Catherine and St. Catherine series. Um, and it's never seemed to be a problem. He never talks about it with a problem. I think today, and it's kind of this paradox that's happening where Google Street View, the more we have the technology to reproduce these people's images and have them mass, you know, communicated, the more we have these really restrictive laws. So we're sort of having this paradox um, that's going on. My stand on yeah. it is... Um, I think that with like, ideas of colonialism and uh, how we were taking images of we, I mean, how the white man was basically um, colonizing all these uh, countries and killing all these people and these civilizations were taking pictures of them aggressively and not giving them a choice. I think that that's definitely a problem um, and I wouldn't want that to ever be reproduced. But at the same time, I mean, isn't it becoming completely crazy? We have this technology and we can't stop it. So I don't know. I'm so very. So is the act of looking an assault? Is the act of? Yeah. Uh, I think it can be for sure. Yeah. I think it's very aggressive. I think. Uh, I mean, I don't want the, to name drop, but Susan Sontag wrote a lot about um, photography as a gun, and I think that it is true. I mean, uh, I think photography can be very violent, and you can really create a sense of self through images and also destroy a sense of self through images. Well, I agree, especially about anthropology, which they say is the handmaiden of imperialism, is, yes. is a destructive, by the very act of interaction and recording, you've destroyed what you're, you're presumably, yeah, you know, trying to uh, capture, documenting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so in its essence, I guess a camera could be considered a, a tool or a satellite of that. Yeah, of that, no, that. definitely. And I think it was, I mean, for many, many years, I think now that we've had all this also postmodern theory about it and we realize and we're critical about it it's true that we have all that baggage and we have all these laws but then we have also just as I was saying this technology that we can't really control I mean anybody can take a picture of anyone anytime we have machines that are so powerful now I mean cameras are so powerful and they are so small that how do you want to control that so and I think we are in a society that wants to have images and we want to take pictures so personally I think anything in the public realm is fair game yeah I, I just the mob rules yeah. And eventually, I mean, a law is not a law unless it's enforceable. A right is yeah. not a right it's unless not. it's enforceable. Yeah, you're right. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> I didn't really answer that.